hello friends happy wednesday how is everyone doing i just kicked the camera sorry about that uh thought i would fit in one last little ramble before uh before christmas i've been working down here in the shop all day and uh just thought well why not take a break have a pipe some haunted bookshop in my wednesday basket pipe grab a tamper here and uh yeah just catch up a little bit one last ramble before Christmas. Uh, I got a few things on my mind. Uh, by the way, if I look filthy, it's because I forgot to wear my apron today, so I've got shop dust all over me. Uh, been working on the kraut cutter. Made some really nice progress, but had a bit of a setback, and we'll talk about that. Uh, I'm wondering where I put my lighter. Well prepared for this video. So... Let's see. First, I got a couple things I wanted to talk about. Uh, first is, you know, Christmas is, is Sunday. Sunday, I think. Yeah. Um, been getting lots of lots of cards, and uh, normally I let my wife open them. But uh, I realized, well, she's not going to be here, so I better start opening cards. And I uh, just want to say thank you to folks that, that sent them. I really appreciate that. I, um, I usually send out, uh, I have for years, send out a pipe uh cane rod pipes christmas card for that was part of the business and i was going to still do that but just you know with everything that happened this year i, I kind of just decided not to send out any cards this year uh, i will write my traditional christmas eve blog post and i'll put a post here linking to that so that you'll you'll be able to see that that's always been sort of like my my card to the community uh if you will uh, now some of you might have been lucky enough to make it onto my wife's Christmas card list, and she's apparently been sending them out uh, like uh, like crazy. So some of you might have gotten a card from us, and you know the others that didn't, I apologize. It's just not been a a good year for that sort of thing for me, and uh, we'll make it up to you next year. But anyway, thanks everybody that that was thoughtful enough to send one and you know to all you folks that are just thoughtful enough to watch this nonsense that I throw up here every once in a while it uh, it's a wonderful thing it's a gift to me and I really appreciate it um, yeah so let's see yesterday I had a wonderful day yesterday and uh, boy it's I've been I've been just doing goofy stuff since I went on vacation uh, so yesterday I was really excited. Uh, I planned to go and, and visit uh, my buddy Ed, uh, Armchair Piper, and always have a great time when I visit Ed. We uh, I take some tobacco. He's always got some tobacco. I take a couple of pipes. Ed's got a few pipes. Uh, man, it's a lot of pipes. And we talk pipes and tobacco and life and stuff. And it's just it's just great. We spent a couple hours just just smoking pipes and, and chatting, and I, I love doing that. And I was really looking forward to this, and I packed up, uh, so I got, I, I usually take my nice uh, pipe roll that uh, Miss Kathy made for me. Thank you, Miss Kathy. And I uh, put in that two or three pipes, then I roll it up, and then I pick out a couple of tobaccos. Uh, and this time I, I, I picked out uh, the uh, Syrian Latakia, the H&H &H Syrian, uh, the St. Bruno Ready Rubbed. And of course, haunted bookshop. And I, I try to choose things that I know Ed hasn't tried, so he has a chance to try them. And those were both on his list. And yeah, pack that all up, and I get the dogs ready to 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 stay alone for uh, you know four or five hours, which isn't that big of a deal. But we have a routine that we go through and all. And I I grab my coffee cup uh, that I filled up for the ride, and it's a, it's about an hour. It depends on traffic and stuff, but it takes me about an hour to get to Ed's. And off I go, and I'm happy as can be, and, and I'm driving, and I, I get the heads, and I'm, you know, this is going to be so much fun. And I, I reach over for my pipe bag that I packed everything into, and it wasn't there. I left it sitting on top of the dog crate, right next to my coffee cup, by the way. Uh, and for some reason, I just didn't get it. So I got the heads, and I was like, Ed, I, I don't have any pipes. I don't have any tobacco. <laughs> Sorry. The whole reason I was coming here was to, to to have a pipe with you, and I I I don't have anything. And Ed very kindly said, "Oh, I can find some pipes and stuff." I said, "Nah, nah, it's okay. You know, you you just enjoy." And he said, "Well, you know, it's kind of okay because I don't usually smoke this early anyway. 
I had a doctor's appointment I had to get to later that afternoon, so we had to do this earlier than usual. So we just sat and, and chatted for about an hour, and you know, it was wonderful. It was great to catch up with Ed. And then he said, hey, if you want to get some lunch, and, and we went to a really nice little, uh, uh, I guess you'd call it a sports bar, but very nice. We had, we had uh, burgers and a beer and uh, dropped Ed off and got back in time for my appointment, and it was just a wonderful day. Uh, would have been even more wonderful. The only thing that could have made it better is I remember to take the darn pipes with me. can't believe I did that. I had my Zippo. I... <laughs> so, yeah, it's been that kind of a of a week so far but that's okay I'm, I'm enjoying it it's nice just to I haven't looked at my work email I haven't even thought about work uh, since uh, since Friday so it's been really nice I uh, I got to get a box in the mail to my good friend Daniel Tobias who you know as the Israeli sheep farmer uh, Daniel bid on a couple of items and well, I didn't uh, in the auction we had a couple weeks ago, and I didn't want any international bids, but he really wanted a pipe, and I knew that uh, it was a pipe that was donated by Peter, the the smooth piper, and I said, well, you know, and and he he wanted to bid on tobacco that I had in my hand, and I said, well, you know, Peter's not that far away; he can mail me the pipe, and I can put everything in the mail for Daniel. That'll be fine. Uh, so I let him. Uh, bid, which I guess wasn't fair to other international folk, but I don't think there were any others. Uh, Eden was on, but he had a friend that was willing to ship for him, so I let him bid so that I could send it to a, a U.S.-based person that would then ship it off to him. There wasn't, I don't think, anyone else that was international, so I, hopefully everybody got to be happy. Anyway, I got this stuff I got to send to Daniel, and I thought, well, uh, Daniel's a good friend. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something else in the box, so I made him what I call a shop camera. And I'm showing you this because something really cool happened. I don't know if this is going to show up. So you've seen me use these. I I kind of turn these on the lathe just to warm up. Uh, am I going to be able to see this? Yeah, it's on this side. So I make these. One end is smaller than the other because sometimes you got a smaller pipe and you, you know got to get down to the bottom. Uh, they're nice little tampers. I mean, they're nothing fancy. They're just flat ends. And then I put this little bump in the middle because I just like to have something to, you know, grab on when I'm when I'm tamping. And you know, they're nice, functional. They get burned up on the end and eventually throw them away. But I thought, yeah, I'll throw this in a box for Daniel because uh, I, I I really like the guy. He's that that interview with him was one of the the best interviews I've done. Uh, you know, with the sheep in the background it was great. So anyway, I, I turned this and, and uh, finished it. But what happened, and this is amazing that this happened, there's a couple of, uh, I guess you, I guess they're knots in the wood. This is cherry, by the way. And I, I did not plan this, but there's a knot right there, and there's one at the end right there, and there's one at the end right there. And it's perfect. It's straight grain between those three points. And it just happened to fall that way. I honestly did not look at that until after I had finished it and I picked it up to to look it over so yeah fate so I'm gonna get that box in the mail to Daniel tomorrow I have the box I had everything in it I, I took it out to repack it and uh, hopefully that'll slip by and get to him very soon that's something I didn't screw up I'm kinda of proud of that uh, the other thing is I've been working on the crop cutter, and uh, if you haven't seen me uh, seen me talk about this previously, it's a large. Uh, now they're called mandolins. They're uh, you know the thing that used to slice vegetables or something like that. Well, this is a big one that's used to slice cabbage for making sauerkraut. And the original belonged to my in-laws. It was probably made in the 20s, and it was poorly made uh, to be kind. Uh, you know, like screws and end grain and stuff like that. They asked me if I could fix it, and I thought, well, heck, if I'm fixing it, I'm going to make it better. So got rid of the end grain screws and all that kind of stuff, and, and I'm, I'm really uh, sort of beefing this up. It's going to be the Cadillac of crop cutters. <laughs> and the thing that I've been struggling with now is I need to make a... So let me show you a picture here. 
So this is the this is the crop cutter. This is the uh, the new version of it that I made. That's cherry. Uh, it's not finished. It's I still need to scrape it and and put a finish on it. But you can see the blades there. And basically, there is a um, a box that sits in there, and you put your cabbage in, and you push this box back and forth. So it's sort of a safety thing. Now, I didn't have the box; uh, they didn't have it, but I was able to find pictures of this on on uh, you know through Google and stuff. And uh, I know what the box kind of looks like, and it was just nailed together again into end grain and stuff, or screwed together. So I decided, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make a dovetail box for it. So it's just a little, it's an open box, just four corners, four walls, and they come together and they fit in there. So I've been working on my dovetails to get that worked out, and I finally glued that up the other night, and I was really happy. I have to, and now the next thing I've got to do, let me go back to the picture here for a minute. If you look, you can see there's a, there's a um, slot. It's, it's basically a, uh, a dado that runs the entire length of the of the board. Uh, it's about a half inch. Uh, it is a half inch uh, in height, and I think it's uh, might be a half inch deep too. I don't remember. And little wings that come off the box will ride in that on either side and let it slide back and forth. Uh, so that's the theory. So I got the box, and now I have to put these wings in the bottom of it. And to do that, you know, I. I like using hand tools. I think hand tools are uh, just better options for a lot of things. Excuse me, my phone is buzzing here. Just turn that off. I I like using hand tools because it allows me to focus, you know, to pay attention to what I'm doing. I have power tools. You know, I've got a, a full shop. We've got a table saw, router, planer, uh, joiner, everything that you would need, a bandsaw, uh, drill press. I, I keep going. Surface sander. I got, I got a lot of tools. I use them for like repetitive stuff, stuff where, you know, I've got everything worked out and I just need to surface a bunch of boards so that I can build a cabinet or something like that. That's that's why I have those tools. But for the, the small stuff, I like to use the hand tools because you don't lose your focus. You, you're, you're very focused on what you're doing. And I've talked about this in the past. Energy follows intention. And if you got a machine doing all the energy stuff, doing all the hard stuff for you, you your mind wanders. So all I had to do was cut a half inch uh, rabbit along both sides of this box. Uh, I don't have a rabbiting plane. Um, I've got I've got one, but it's just a really poorly made one that was cheap, and the blade on it is made of. I don't know, some really gummy metal that I can't get sharp, and I've never bothered to replace. Anyway, I, I, I don't have a rabbiting plane <laughs> that I could use. And I thought, well, heck, this is what routers are made for. I'm just going to set up the router, and I'm going to cut that half-inch rabbit on, on the thing and, and be done. And I did it, and it was great, except I cut it all around the box on the front and back as well, which I shouldn't have done. So now I've got to fix that. I've got to basically fill it in and rather than remake the box I decided that's what I'm going to do so I'll show you one more picture here um, this is the box you can see the hopefully see the dovetails on the end there and this again is not finished and right now I have the two wings glued in there that's what all the clamps are for and maybe you can see at the top of the box on either either edge there's a piece of wood that's actually clamped into it and that's glued and you know it's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, side grain gl glue surface, so it's going to be very secure. And I'm going to put some brass pins in, uh, also just to just to kind of anchor that. But I've got those gaps in the front and the back, and you can see the that's either the front or the back; it doesn't matter. Uh, so I got to fill those in with uh, pieces, and I didn't want to do that, but such is life. Uh, you also see a big gob of glue there on the side, which I noticed after I was looking at the pictures to put in here and I ran over and scraped it off so <laughs> that's been taken care of yeah so that's the the problem is you know sometimes you make a mistake because you're working too fast and power tools in my opinion make it much easier to make that mistake there's nothing wrong with them you know people turn out a lot of really nice stuff with power tools uh, but if it's up to me and if I had the time I would I would do everything with hand tools because it allows me to focus
And, you know, I've got the skill. I've developed the skills over the years. And that's the problem. A lot of people don't have the time to do that. And, you know, that's, that's okay. It shouldn't be a barrier. Now, if you don't have the time to learn how to surface and square a piece of rough lumber, rough timber, uh, but you've got the money to buy a jointer and a, and a thickness planer, well, go at it. You know, that, that's, a, that's a perfectly reasonable way to do it. But it's so much fun to do it by hand. You know, it's it's so much fun. So, even sawing. You know, I got a table saw and a bandsaw, and if it's something I can fit on my bench and saw by hand, I'll do it because I just I just like doing it. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's been my blunders for the week. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. I think it's important every once in a while to prove to the world that I am human. Oh, just kidding. I'm, I'm, I'm subhuman sometimes. <laughs> so the last thing I wanted to talk about, um, and this is going to, you're going to laugh at me, <laughs> but I got, I got to tell this story because I got to, I got to get to the end of it. Well, it's not really a story. So there's a song that I bet most of you have heard, some of you would recognize, and all of you would, would despise. Um, it's not, it's a very poppy uh, Christmas song. It came out in the 80s. You know, it's, it's, it's very, uh, I guess you'd say, new wave. And it's, it's, it's by a group called The Waitresses. And it's, I think the name of it is Christmas Rapping. And it's sung by a woman. Uh, and she's singing a song about the fact that she's going to be by herself at Christmas because there's this guy that she's been trying to have a date with, but she's been too busy and he's been too busy and it didn't match up all year. And now she's just fed up with it all and she's just going to have her own Christmas. Um... Now, this is a song that I like to hear exactly once every year because I, it just makes me remember what Christmas was like back in the 80s, you know, and I, I, it's, I, I don't like the song. I don't think it's a very good piece of recording or music or anything like that. The lyrics are kind of goofy, but it just makes me feel good when I hear it. But I want to hear it more than once. And I will usually, uh, the last day I work, uh, it's just sort of a tradition. I will I will switch over to uh, Sirius XM Holiday Traditions, and, and I'll listen to that, but I'll plug in the phone, and I'll go to YouTube, and I will play this song as I'm driving home. It's just a very upbeat, you know, peppy kind of song, and it makes me feel like, okay, Christmas has begun. So now you all know a very embarrassing fact about me. Uh, most people would probably think this was a, a chick song, <laughs> but... It's it's a fun song. Anyway, so I did that this year, and I thought to myself, yeah, I, yeah, it's on YouTube, and I, as I'm I'm not obviously watching the the video as I'm driving, but as it starts, I realize that there's a music video, and then I start driving, and I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, I've never actually seen this music video. I don't know if you guys even do they still make music videos? I I don't know. I mean, this was a big thing in the '80s. I don't really remember much about it other than it was a big thing you know the whole tv channel that was devoted to it i remember on friday nights there used to be a show on uh that came on like after the news and they play for a half an hour they play the top music videos for that week um and of course music at that time was pretty abysmal and uh the videos were just ways of selling that god awful music but some of them were funny and, you know. Anyway, I got home and I thought, I gotta see this. I've never seen this video. Yet. And I'm just wondering what it's like. You know, is it, is it this woman telling a story? And to be honest, I've never even seen the group. I imagine it was like a bunch of women because they called themselves the waitresses. Actually, I think it was one woman and a bunch of guys. It might've been two women and a bunch of guys. I don't know. Anyway, so I watched this video. 
I broke my rule. I listened to the song twice. I've never been insane, I think. But this video made me feel like I might be. This might be what people that have lost their minds see when they look at the world. It made no sense. It was... I. It, all, it, it almost looked like they were playing music over something that was unrelated to it. Like, like they recorded a video for a different song and then just put this music on top of it. Uh, it, was, it was the strangest thing. So I'm going to link to it below because I, I, I would love to hear other people's opinion of this. I mean, I honestly thought I might have lost it. Um, but if you've already heard the song once this year, don't watch the video. I don't want you to... Maybe that's maybe maybe that makes you lose your mind. I don't know. Anyway, that's my... <laughs> that's my last little bit of Christmas uh, cheer for you all. I, I thought you'd enjoy that. And uh, I just want other people to tell me that there's... That, that video doesn't make sense. Because if it does make sense, I've got a problem. Ah, yes. So, I'm waiting for glue to cure, dry, whatever glue does. I think this particular glue cures. I gotta make a press for the top, so maybe I can start to work on that. I can measure it out based on the box. Uh, it doesn't have to fit exactly. In fact, it should be a loose fit. Let's get something maybe a quarter inch smaller all around so that there's you know, room to maneuver in there and uh, make a handle for that and then uh, we're off to the races and I don't know if the handle should be held this way as you push it or this way as you push it I'll have to think about that I think this way but that's gonna put a lot of stress on the handle no oh, decision ah, I know I'll, I'll look on Google and see what the pictures tell me So I'm going to finish this pipe and get back to work. Uh, I'll see you on Friday night, I hope. Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. We're going to have uh, some Christmas shenanigans on the live stream. Don't know what they are yet, but uh, it's always fun. And I will not be doing a video on Sunday. Uh, and probably not at all next week because uh, my darling wife is going to be back. And uh, we're probably going to be gallivanting about doing holiday things. So... Uh, you will probably not see me until the Sunday after Christmas. Uh, well, the Friday after Christmas, if you come for, for the Friday live stream. So, once again, I'm going to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays, if you prefer. Happy year-end season, if you're one of those folks. <laughs> Happy winter solstice, or whatever. Uh... The, the druids celebrate and all that good stuff. I hope you're all happy. I hope you're spending time with loved ones and friends and eating good food and sharing and recognizing what's really important in life. Because that's what it's all about. We're only here for a very short time and we might as well make the most of it. So with that, my friends, I'm going to draw this ramble to a close and uh, hope you all have a great Christmas. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Take care, my friends. Mm -hmm.